Okay, so we can now head up these steps into the Undead Parish. There's going to be a few things we need to do here. Um, obviously, we ultimately need to kill the gargoyles. Um, before that, I'm going to get the Firekeeper Soul. I'm going to grab the uh, the key, maybe it's the basement key, kind of outside the left entrance. And then I'm going to hit the shortcut back to Firelink Shrine to take care of a few things there. These enemies are all extremely easy when you have this weapon equipped this early in the game. Now this is not an early game weapon, this is an you know, late to end game weapon. But we have it equipped now essentially at the beginning of the game. The range on it is fantastic and the damage is amazing compared to the enemies we're fighting now. I'm going to come in here and run quickly past this heavy knight. The channeler enemy up on the balcony can shoot you, so I want to get far enough away from him that he's not hitting me with magic. Use your range to kill this guy quickly and grab the Firekeeper Soul. He'll drop a Titan Knight Shard, and he happened to drop his Tower Shield for me. There's that Channeler. This part can be pretty dangerous because we need to kill these three Balder Knights. Um, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to go a safer way just to have one less chance at dying. I mean, you certainly could engage those three Knights. They die in one shot. Uh, you just got to be careful not to get shot by the Channeler while you're doing it. Here we might just have to engage one Balder Knight who is not even aware of our presence. So we can turn right here. And now, a couple of items you want to grab out here. Grab the halberd so you have one to make ultimately the uh, life hunt scythe with the soul of Priscilla for the knight's honor achievement. One of these knights heard me and he came out. But the important item out here is this key. I think it's the basement key. We need that to get to lower undead burg. And you can see that's the path that leads from the dragon out on the bridge that we would have followed had we gone the normal way through the Undead Burg and killed the Taurus Demon. We never have to really go through this part of the game, although we will uh, go through Undead Burg and get to the bridge with the Hellkite Dragon shortly. We, we do have to get his, uh, his tail weapon for Knight's Honor. So now there's a couple of enemies still left in here. This guy managed to block my attack and I'm trying to fall back to safety to engage him. There we go. And the last one should come at me. I'll go ahead and Kill him as well. See if he drops anything useful. Some gauntlets that I have no need for. So now I'm going to quickly run. This channeler may try to shoot me. And I want to go back to Firelink Shrine now. So I'm going to activate the shortcut and ride this lift down to the bottom. In Firelink Shrine I'm going to grab um, some items out of chests that are accessible by dropping off of this lift at the bottom. Homeward Bones, uh, Lloyd's Talismans, um, a mace, and a um, I'm drawing a blank on the item that is used to cast mir uh, miracles. I feel real dumb right now. A talisman. This is the Homeward Bones. I'm going to dip out into the graveyard, kill some skeletons, and get a couple of soul items. I'm going to go redeem my Firekeeper soul. And then I'll rest at the bonfire and head right back up to the Undead Parish. So now we'll head to the other side. These uh, skeletons are normally very difficult to engage at the start of the game, but again, we're pretty overpowered with the Black Knight Halberd, so it's no problem. And again, this weapon will carry you through the entire game. We'll upgrade it very soon, all the way to plus five, and it's the only weapon you'll need to play the anything you need to do in this game you can do with this weapon. So now I'm going to make my way up to this upper section and just kind of follow it around to get the soul item out on the ledge up here. And then I want to head over, I don't have to go this way, but I feel like it. And I want to get over to a uh, path over here that leads to six fire bombs, just so I have them. I'll use these fire bombs much later on to kill the two nodes on either side of the bed of chaos. And I feel like I'm so sluggish until I can get back down to under 25% equipment load. I'll go ahead and rest at the bonfire. I'm going to go down and upgrade my Estus Flask with Anastasia. 
And then I'm actually going to hit the bonfire one more time and level up. I think I should be able to level up once. Maybe if I consume my soul items, I can level up twice. Having extra health at this point is going to be very beneficial because we're kind of a glass cannon until we get level up a little bit more. Again, be careful not to consume any boss souls. So, I think I can level up twice now. So I'll put both points in vitality. That just gives me about 50-something more health. 10% more health, so that's a nice bonus. From here, you can talk to Petrus. He can invite you to join the Way of White Covenant for that achievement. There's another soul item up these steps. I'll grab that real quick. And then it's back to the Undead Parish. Okay, so first thing we'll do is head up these steps on the left. There's going to be a Balder Knight and this run right here. Should be able to one-shot him, no problem. Now we have to engage the Channeler and about ten um, very weak hollow enemies, but they are very dangerous. Um, I was expecting to have to go a little farther to engage them initially, but one kind of jumped out and caught me off guard. You just want to kind of lead them down this path and use your range to kill them. If you take some damage like I did, be sure to heal because they can kill you quickly. I'm actually going to back up and take a sip of Estus. Let them come to this next hallway. So that should be all of the hollow enemies. I want to be careful with the Chandler because his magic does considerable damage. I absolutely can one-shot him. With a little luck, he'll drop his Chandler's trident. It's very unlikely. And he didn't, but... If you happen to get it there, that's great, because you do need to get one eventually for Knight's Honor, and um, you can farm two channelers later on in Duke's Archives, but getting that weapon out of the way now is uh, very helpful. So we'll run up here and one-shot this Balder Knight, and we are going to now um, follow this slope around and break a barrel at the end to get a humanity off of this corpse. And now I'm going to roll through a, a wooden plank here that's going to allow me access to an area where there's a, a knight NPC locked in a little prison cell. Now this guy has a quest line where he is very thankful and reappears at Firelink Shrine, kills the Firekeeper, and eventually you can invade and kill him. I want his ring now, so I'm going to smack him, and I'm going to drop off the ledge. He, this guy is pretty aggressive. You want to be careful. He can kill you pretty quickly. He does not stagger like many enemies do. I guess he has high poise. So when you hit him with your weapon, you got to be prepared to get away because he'll fight right through it. And I think it takes three or four hits beyond the initial hit to kill him. And there we go. Now that he's dead, I'll loot his corpse. I'll get five humanities and the Ring of Favor. The Ring of Favor gives a tremendous boost to hit points, stamina, and equipment load. And now I can actually go ahead and equip some gauntlets because I'm still under uh, under 30, what is it, 31.7 I could have? I don't feel like wearing a helmet. It's all fashion souls for me. Um, and the thing about the Ring of Favor, though, is if you take it off and the game will warn you, if you take it off, it'll break. So we're pretty much going to wear this for the life of our character. So I'll run over here to the right and up some steps. There are summon signs everywhere because this game is so incredibly new. Uh, you are free to summon whoever you'd like. You certainly could summon two helpers at this point. I'm only going to summon Solaire, which is the golden summon sign at the top here. And now we will engage the uh, Bell Gargoyles. This is the first real boss of the game. Um, it starts off with uh, one gargoyle flying down. The first gargoyle has a long tail that uh, he can swing and attack you with, and you want to attack that tail to chop it off for the Gargoyle Tail Axe, which is needed for the Knight's Honor achievement. Uh, you get one chance at these Bell Gargoyles to chop it off. Um, there are two lesser Gargoyles in In Orlando that also 
can have their tails chopped off. And those are your three attempts per playthrough to get that weapon. So I always try to get it out of the way here. Um, with that said, we'll walk out here. You need to make your way across this roof in order to trigger a cutscene. After the cutscene, the engagement will begin. Uh, the first gargoyle will fly down right away. The second one joins him about 20 or 30 seconds later. You can see right there in the cinematic that he has that gargoyle tail axe. Um, as soon as he lands, I'm going to try to run directly behind him and uh, without locking on, just uh, angle my attack properly to hit him in the tail. One shot will be sufficient to chop it off. Um, I probably only need three, maybe four total hits, if that, to kill this enemy. So I'm going to be careful not to put too much damage on him and try to focus on chopping off this tail so it's just one less thing to worry about. So here he is. He flew over. I whiffed on the tail there. So I'm going to try to get behind him. I hit it and it didn't come off. There we go. So there's the gargoyle tail axe. And you can see I do about maybe 30% of his health in one hit. So he is dead. The second one likes to come down and breathe fire. It's going to take just over one shot to kill him. And he is dead and we are done. Now this battle is considerably harder, A, if you don't have Solaire or help. But B, if you have a, the standard weapon you might have now, it's going to be a lot harder because it's going to take you way more than two or three hits to kill each of those gargoyles. So with that done, we can now enter this tower, climb up the ladder. We did receive 10,000 souls and um, a twin humanities. And after I ring this bell of awakening, which will unlock an achievement... Um, rather than having to run on foot all the way back, I am simply going to use a Homeward Bone, and since I last rested at the bonfire at Firelink Shrine, it will warp me back there immediately and save me some time. Okay, back at Firelink Shrine, I'm going to level up. I'm going to level up my vitality, I think, straight to 20 before I do anything else. Um, I need 4,000 souls, though, to do two upgrades to my weapon. It takes 2,000 souls per upgrade, and it's upgraded with Twinkling Titanite. The first two upgrades take one each, Twinkling Titanite. The next two upgrades take two each, and the fifth and final upgrade takes four. Now, I have two Twinkling Titanite from that... Uh, Crystal Lizard in the Undead, or I'm sorry, in the Dark Root Basin. And I do have at least one soul item I can consume that'll put me over 4,000 souls, so I'll go ahead and stop here with 3910 left over. And I will use that soul item. Again, be careful not to accidentally use boss souls. So now what I'm going to do is head down and very quickly upgrade my weapon, and I'm going to take a short trip into New Londo Ruins to get a Firekeeper soul. And then after I do that, I'll just take a Homeward Bone back to save me some time. And then I will head up into the Undead Burg and start along the path that really is the first thing you would normally do in this game. Um, but it's uh, what we'll have to actually do now after having done things that we wouldn't have normally done because of the alternate path we took. And um, I was uh, got a little ahead of myself. When we get back to Firelink, we're going to head into the catacombs. And I'll show you how to quickly drop down to the bottom so we can engage Pinwheel. And get the Rite of Kindling, which will allow us to kindle bonfires up to 20 Estus Flasks. And that's very easy to do if you know what you're doing. So out here in New Londo Ruins, I'm going to come along here and talk to Rickard of Vinheim. He's a... Uh, NPC blacksmith that's kind of trapped in the cell. He has no interest of getting out, but he's happy to help. So I'll reinforce weapon, and I'll choose Black Knight Halberd, and I'll use my two Twinkling Titanite and 4,000 souls to upgrade it to plus three. It's a considerable damage increase. You want to be careful not to hit your B button and, like, 
back step off of that cliff to your death, by the way, I've done that before. So with that done, now we're going to head out into New Londo Ruins, which is an area where generally at this stage of the game not really in any, um, any uh, hurry to get to. I'm going to grab this S-Dock for later. I can use this S-Dock to maybe make the Moonlight Butterfly Horn for Knight's Honor later on. I'll break this pot and pick up transient curses off of this corpse. There are two wooden rickety bridges we need to cross to get into New Londo Ruins. Uh, there are ghost enemies out here that we normally cannot harm. They are immune to all damage. But if we consume one of those transient curses, it'll apply a buff to us that lasts, I think, five minutes and allows you to damage these ghost enemies. Now, I'm not going too deep into this area, um, really because I have no business out here yet. There's still other things in the game I need to do before I would advance through here. But I'm just going to come out here where I'll, I'll have to engage a handful of ghosts in order to get to a Firekeeper soul that will allow me to upgrade my Estus Flask. So, if you saw where I went, you kind of follow along this wall structure and then turn here, and you'll see the item at the end of the path. And what I will warn you is, after this arch right here, it's a very precarious bridge straight across to this next little section where we pick up that item. I'm going to slowly step out onto this, and it's going to spawn three ghost enemies. You'll see they haven't spawned yet. Here it comes. So now I'm going to lock onto this close one and kill it. And then I'm going to back into the alcove and let these two far ghosts come at me and use my range to kill them. So there we go. So now I'm going to gently and carefully make my way across this precarious bridge. If you fall off of here, it is death. I'm going to grab this Firekeeper Soul, and I certainly could walk back to Firelink Shrine from here and save a Homeward Bone. And if you do, the camera gets really wonky here because it turns your angle as you walk through here to try to give you a clear line of sight and not have any obstruction. So if you were to walk straight here, the camera would turn you sideways and you would run right off of there. But anyway, with that said, I'm just going to use a Homeward Bone and get back to Firelink Shrine. So, from here I'm ready to go. Um, before we head up to the Undead Burg, I'm actually going to go down into the Catacombs. Uh, the Catacombs are very dangerous. Uh, we're kind of under-leveled to really go through it now, and there's what we have to gain in the Catacombs we can do um, by skipping most of it, if you know where to drop off or roll off of ledges. Uh, essentially, it's filled with um, skeletons that will constantly resurrect if... Um, necromancer enemies are nearby and those guys don't respawn and you need to kill necromancers to stop their nearby skeletons from respawning. Um, once we get all the way down to the bottom there's a dangerous area with some uh, wheel skeleton guys that can kill you very quickly. Beyond that is a boss called Pinwheel. Killing him grants you the right of kindling which allows you to kindle bonfires up to 20 Estus Flask uses. So we're gonna run basically kill only a handful of enemies in the beginning, open up a barrier and then essentially drop all the way down to the bottom of the catacombs and uh, there's a NPC summon Paladin Leroy you don't really need him but he helps and he's right there so I'll summon him and then we'll run into the uh, pinwheel encounter pinwheel being one of the easiest bosses in this game and after we kill pinwheel he will of course drop us one of his three masks father mother child I think father is useless uh, mother gives you a nice health increase, so that's worth wearing. Child gives you stamina regeneration, so that's worth wearing. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to use my shield to run past the skeleton. I, of course, can't use my weapon in the process, but I just want to be able to block him in case he jumps at me. And I'm essentially running to the first bonfire room. I'm just running past a bunch of skeletons that appear. I will not engage anything in here because they'll just come back to life. And I want to get in this room and find the first necromancer enemy. He'll shoot fire at you when you get close, so be careful. And two shots and he's dead. And now any skeletons in the, up to this point that come at me will permanently die when I kill them. I do not want to rest at this bonfire because when I homeward bone after killing Pinwheel, I want to homeward bone all the way back to Fire Lincoln, not have to run from here out of the catacombs. So I'm not even going to interact with that bonfire. I am going to heal myself. And then I'm going to interact with this switch, and that's going to open up a barrier that would have been blocking my way had I not come in here. 
So now I'll make my way back out. All of the skeletons that I aggroed on the way are probably out here waiting for me. They're not too tough to kill. They don't um, stand up very well to a Black Knight Halberd. And now I'll head out here into the catacombs, and there is another necromancer across a gap, meaning that these skeletons here, there he is, these skeletons here will revive endlessly. So I'm just going to try to run by them. Killing them is pointless. What I want to do is get to this bridge, get across to this other side, put my back to the wall, and then roll right along this bridge on my right, and then land here and roll across skeleton. Uh, there's some skull enemies that explode and do damage. Right here, I want to walk to this ledge. There's Paladin Leroy's summon sign below, and I need to drop off. Now, careful, because skeletons will meet me down here from above. And remember, I can't kill them permanently, so he'll be back. So I'm going to summon Leroy. I'm going to pick up this soul item, and this skeleton is, of course, coming back to life because of his necromancer is still alive. And I'm just ensuring that I did summon Leroy before I carefully drop off to a ledge just above the ground. I want to get to this ledge right here, and it's possible to have aggroed some of these wheel skeletons, and they are extremely dangerous. The one is walking away, and there's just a standard skeleton down here, but I'm hoping that Paladin Leroy sees this guy and decides to drop down and kill him. Leroy will ac absolutely make work of these wheel skeletons like they're no problem, so he sees them. He's going to go down there and get busy. He did take some damage, but whatever. He's having some problems, but he'll get them. I don't really need him for the pinwheel battle. All I really need him for is to safely get me past this part. So I don't want to have to deal with any of those guys. So when everything I see immediately is dead, I'm going to make a run into this pathway. Leroy will follow me. And then this will lead me to the fog door that leads to the pinwheel engagement. So I need to drop into this area for it to start. There will, of course, be a cutscene. Paladin Leroy should follow me. I'm going to heal after I drop in, so I'm, I'm not going to heal now. I'm going to take damage on the fall anyway. As soon as the battle starts, I'm going to charge at Pinwheel. Essentially, all he does is shoot fire at you very slowly and summon clones of himself that will also shoot fire at you. So, I mean, you can kill the clones if you want to. They take one shot to kill. Um, you just need to put, like, maybe four or five shots on Pinwheel and he will die. And, of course, when he does, we get the Rite of Kindling. We get one of his masks at random. I want to say 10,000 souls. And then we'll Homeward Bone out of here and continue on to the Undead Berg. So, right from the start, he has summoned a clone. I'll just hit that one first. They're going to shoot some fire, so I was able to dodge it. So, he teleported away. Look around and see where he reappears. And that's it. That's as easy as it gets. So, here we have it. Rite of Kindling. That achievement would pop if you didn't have it yet. I get Humanity and a Homeward Bone. And 15,000 souls. And there's the mask he dropped. Of course, it's Mask of the Father, which is useless. Um, I won't even equip that. Mask of the Mother or Mask of the Child, I would. So now I'm going to Homeward Bone out. This is going to take me all the way back to Firelink. If I were to progress further, it would take me into the Tomb of the Giants, which is completely dark and very difficult to navigate through. Um, I will head into there after we get the Lord Vessel and after we uh, you know, complete the Anne Orlando engagements. So back at Firelink, I'm going to go ahead and sit down at the bonfire. I can level up. I'll go ahead and go up to 20 Vitality. And I'm going to start putting some points in Endurance now that my Vitality is 20. I want to get my endurance up to about 16 or 17. Uh, this will let me wear some equipment once I get Havel's Ring and still be under 25% equipment load. Right now my equipment load is 63.6. That means I can have, what, 31.8? And still be under. So I'll equip some, some heavier equipment. Should give me a little bit more protection, and I'm still under 50%. I still have medium roll. So... Now I'm ready to head up to the Undead Berg. Um, this is going to be a long kind of adventure here in the Undead Berg. I've got a lot that I'm going to do. I'm going to start by engaging these hollow enemies. 
This one jumps down. Now the one up on the cliff is throwing firebombs at me. I want to try to not get hit with one of those. I'll lure this guy away. I don't really need the soul of a lost undead, but I'm going to come out here and grab it. 200 souls is 200 souls. And then I'll make my way up the cliffside. I'm going to run right past firebomb guy and go to his friend over on the left. If I was a little more careful, I wouldn't have taken damage there. Or there. So those two are dead. And... Um, I'm gonna kill this guy, and I'm gonna go back to fire the bonfire, because the whole point of going down to the catacombs was to kindle my bonfire up to 20. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I have two humanity left over from the initial four I had used, so now I can kindle two more times. That'll put five more flasks in my, or five more uses in my flask. And now... I am ready to go up into the Undeadburg.